Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, look what I picked up. It's a 1931 to 1935, somewhere in that range, 12 inch Craftsman bandsaw. It's made by Herbert Machinery Company. It's kind of a classic design. Uh, we're going to restore this. Let's check it out. Seems to be in really good shape. It's missing a blade guide right here. That's the first thing we're going to make. And uh, I think I may modify or replace the lower blade guide. It's a really strange setup. Let's take a look at that. There it is right there. It's actually just a dowel, and it may be a wood dowel. You just lock it in place like that. And I think I can do better than that. That probably works, but it's pretty crude. I heard that it is, in fact, the original blade guide. Now, on this upper blade guide, which is the first one we're going to address, you might think that... Uh, a bearing would go behind there as a thrust bearing, like that. That's kind of a standard setup. But I looked at a lot of old pictures, and what it is, it's got a hole on the end of a half inch rod like that, and a disc that spins, and it's like a little mushroom setup. Uh, look, like a disc with a stem on it, and it's got uh, maybe some slave bearings in there, and it just spins. Uh, but this, the problem with this bearing, I would use a bearing because it's probably superior to what I'm going to make, but the bearing is, is wider than it needs to be. The problem with the, the bearing is right, this back blade guide here, uh, it's got a little, uh, I think it's a graphite impregnated pin that runs up against the side of that. But if you'll notice, to run in that back position, it would never reach it because the bearing's too thick. Uh, also, you can look at the position of the blade on the wheel. It's all the way forward. So the, the blade really needs to run closer to that back position right there. And to do that, it needs something thinner than this bearing. And I've looked and looked for a bearing. It really needs to be about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch larger in diameter and thinner. And they don't make a bearing like that. So I'm going to go with the original style and see what we can do. Okay, this right here, a friend of mine that works at a machine shop gave it to me. It's pre-hardened, 4140 I think. I didn't really want to have to go through the hassle of hardening it. And I think this will be hard enough. We'll find out. What I'm going to do, drill it and thread it for this shoulder bolt right here. And I've got some bearings. I'm going to cut the head of that off and use that as the stem for this disc. Uh, and I've got some sleeve bearings that slide right over that. The only problem I have is the Shoulder bolts like this are typically made like two or three thousandths under size. So the sleeve bearing is a little bit of a loose fit, but we're going to give it a try. I think it might be all right. Wondering about maybe a little Loctite in there. I've got a little bit of acetone in here. I'm going to rinse out these threads. Now, hopefully, when I use the imitation Loctite here, it'll, it'll hold it.
Well, I wonder how, t how true that's running. Let's take it out of back gear and find out. Oh, it looks pretty good. I like it. Someday, I'm going to fix all those noisy gears in my lathe. Okay, right about here, I'm going to go in a little ways. And then we're going to utilize my jaw modification thing here. Hopefully I didn't cut too much of a bevel on that. I got some grooves right here that I modified my... I cut them in there with a boring bar so I could do stuff like this. Okay, I've got my stem here all made and I'm going to drill a hole in here. And this is fairly hard steel and this is mild steel. I'm not going to put a sleeve bearing in it. It may go bad. If it does, I'll make another one. But I think it'll be okay. And I'm going to drill it extra deep because I'm going to put a ball bearing in the bottom of it. The ball bearing will be my thrust bearing. Okay, I need to go about an inch and a half deep. Now that's under size. Yeah. And I'm going to ream it to size. And that's one reason I'm going with... I've got a one under reamer here. One thousandths under. And that's one reason I'm going with just steel bearings instead of the bushings. The bronze sleeve bearings. Maybe the wrong thing to do, but we're going to give it a try. Uh, the, the bronze bearings are one and a half over, and this is two and a half under. The the uh, it's two and a half under that uh, shoulder bolt. Need that in back gear. Good way to burn up a reamer there. Okay, let's put this together. That's some PTFE spray lubricant. The can was messed up. Just a little bit on the snug side. I think it'll be all right. I think just as soon as it spins a little bit, it'll be free as can be. That bearing should provide good thrust. Okay, it's got a little thumb screw right here. And this goes through the casting right there. And this goes behind it, behind the blade. Just like that. Oh boy, that looks like it's going to work good. adjust the depth like that. Hmm. Not spinning very good. Maybe it's too much surface area. Then again, maybe I need to uh, just ream that, ream that out one more time. Make it slightly bigger. That was a quarter inch reamer. I don't know, that may be too big, but it felt like it was too tight.
Okay, let's take a look at this lower blade guide. Okay, according to the information I've found out there on the internet, this is the original setup. Just a dowel going through here. I guess you have to move that blade or put a shorter dowel in to get the dowel in and out. That looks like it's a piece of plastic. But I think I can do better on that. There's quite a bit of room underneath this table. Maybe put a couple of these blocks here. I don't know what they are. I th thought they were made out of some kind of graphite. But they feel more like just steel blocks. Kind of mushroom down the end. I can't get them out. But make a similar guide on the bottom with a thrust bearing. Maybe turn the bearing the other way. I don't know if there's enough room in there or not. I don't know. Maybe this worked all right. Seems kind of crude. Maybe I'll just restore the man saw and go with this original blade guide. What do you think? <laughs> Very crude. You got the upper blade guide, as long as you lower this into the right position, the bottom wheel should, I mean the bottom blade guide should just be for stability this way. Hmm. I think that's what we'll do. I think the next step is to give it a thorough cleaning. There's the original motor that came with it. It's got a pin that ho pins it to here. Now the guy that sold it to me said that was the original motor, but the mounting right here looks homemade. I don't know why it has, I mean the whole thing pivots on this pin right here, like that. But why does it have a second pivot? It's kind of odd. We'll make that look more original. Craftsman did have Dunlap motors and that is what that is, so it could be the original uh, motor with a different mount. Obviously that's homemade. I think I'm going to make this for metal cutting only. So I'll have to come up with some kind of slowdown on it. Well, it worked. Gotta love the simplicity of this. I don't understand this right here. The bolt holes in this platform line up with these bolt holes. I don't know what the second hinge is for. But the machine is obviously designed for the motor to hang off the back like that. And the motor's got the switch on the back for the power and an open belt on the other side. I'm all for safety, but some kind of personal accountability is a great thing. If you see an open belt, you don't stick your finger in it. It's like you don't stick your finger in the holes right here. How simple is that? That little thing worked pretty good. Oh, interesting. I expected that to be a square hole. I guess it's easier to make a round hole. Things like this always kind of amaze me. I think this was cast, it, I know it was cast in the table. That's got to be a hard thing to cast right there. Oh, 
a dowel blade guide. Simplicity. <laughs> Oh, cool. Simple, simple. Love it. Well, it was, uh, got down to about 28 degrees last night. Kind of chilly out here. I got my hose hooked up to the uh, hot water heater. It's on the bottom of the hose, so it's probably, or bottom of the hot water heater, so it's probably not going to put out hot water. But at least I'll have some water to rinse this off with. I think I must be melting some ice in my hose. There we go. This is some good, good spray cleaner. Spray Power by Crown. It works better when it's hot, but it's still working pretty good as a degreaser here. Use paint thinner on here, and then, uh, spray power and rinse it off. Boy, my hands are getting cold. Oh, warm water. Ah, feels good on my hands. Well, there it is. Cleaned it up fairly nicely. Kind of odd how the paint changed color like that. It was just a combination of paint thinner and that spray power cleaner. Here's the other parts here. They're not completely clean yet. I got some wire brushing to do, uh, some sanding. I'll probably check it for lead content on the paint before I sand it so I don't poison myself. Hmm. Looks like acetone takes off the blue paint. Okay, I cleaned this piece with acetone and it kind of softened the paint. We're going to see how this paint do does on it. Make sure it doesn't lift the finish or whatever. Well, it's how to clean up this rusty surface pretty good.
Hey, well, let's get rid of some rust. The other side of this table is really rusty. I've got three gallons of this stuff left over from when I did my mill. Good stuff. This is obviously not original, but somebody did a decent job making it. It looked like the holes lined up with the motor just fine. So we're going to give it a shot. I like the way it works. Well, there it is all cleaned up. All we lack now is cleaning up the motor and then we'll put her back together. Be sure and join me next week and we'll give this thing a try. Thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.